This podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Visit the Tech Podcast Network at www.techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here. Welcome to Talcast, your creator. To the Gospel Gadget Podcast, episode 34. Welcome, CalCast listeners, to another episode of CalCast, the podcast about how God is using new media and technology for missions today. I'm Cal Curtis, your host, here to bring you the latest in gospel gadgets and technology for finishing the task of world evangelization. This podcast is proudly listed at podcastpickle.com. Today on Gospel Gadget Podcast, we're going to be looking at an interview done of a very good friend of mine, David Paluski, and he started a ministry called Renew Outreach. And what Renew Outreach does is they create new technology. Uh, usually it's technology that can be used in areas where there's not electricity or electricity is not commonly available. And so they use a lot of solar panel technology to power up devices that will play media, either audio or video uh, playing devices. They have been the ones to create all of the media portable devices for Jesus Film and other ministries that are playing their media around the world, especially to unreached people groups. So David is an amazing guy. He is uh, used to be with Youth of the Mission, and then the Lord led him on and his wife to establish this new ministry, Renew Outreach. They are incredible followers of Jesus and really innovative engineers, really setting the pace for a lot of the technology that missionaries are using today. So enjoy this interview of David Puluski and the Renew Outreach Ministry. You're listening to Faith Talk Live with Rick Probst and Dan Ratcliffe on Faith Talk Atlanta. I'm thinking it's the Wednesday edition of Faith Talk Live. It is Wednesday hump day. All right, I'm Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. It is Wednesday. What? It, that's right, it is hump day. It is right? hump day. You've Already. been talking about Friday all morning. What's up with that? Uh, it's almost, almost Friday. So tomorrow's <laughs> almost Friday, today's almost, almost Friday. <laughs> But you know, if we wouldn't, if we would have just passed on Wednesday, mm-hmm. we wouldn't get to talk to these amazing uh, gentlemen uh, to the right of me. David uh, Paluski, right? Is that close, David? That's me. Mm-hmm. All right. And Brandon? On Solik. That's Sorry. it. You on nailed Solik. it. Okay. You nailed it. Awesome. It's Very good cool. to have you guys from uh, Renew Outreach. We're going to talk about what you guys are doing, basically equipping the body of Christ with technology digital media and strategies to reach the unreached and uh, the most uh, remote people with the message of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. How about that? It's awesome. Very cool. We got to meet uh, Brandon at uh, our Faith Talk Live event that we had not too long ago, and uh, he got to hear all about your bell uh, from Anita Bristow, <laughs> so we appreciate that from Anita. Uh, but just hearing about the uh, technology and what you guys do with these little movie projectors, very, very, very cool. So we're excited about yeah, that. Yeah, we want to talk about that. And I didn't realize, I was reading the bios, I didn't realize that Brandon was a lawyer. Oh, don't say that on the uh-oh, radio. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, uh, here's my story. Can you run for president? I'll vote for you. <laughs> Actually, I was born in Canada. Oh, well, so you can't run for president. Okay. Well, so but much you are that. an attorney, and you graduated from UGA. I did, right? Yeah. yeah. What about them dogs? Abby, what about them dogs? Never oh, mind. Oh, see, there it goes okay, again. Okay, sorry. I didn't bring up the Panthers, <laughs> right? Except for right now. We are praying and fasting for the Panthers this weekend, so yes. uh, they will not let us down. Right, Abby? 
<laughs> right, she says. A mm-hmm. couple of months ago, I get this bill in the mail, right? Because my wife goes to the library with the boys. I've got two teenage boys, <laughs> and I get a bill in the mail for a hundred and what was it, Dan? One hundred and twenty-five bucks yeah. for an overdue library book, a tape set. Yeah. And I was like, okay, now I need a lawyer. So I need to talk to you about how I can get out of this. I turned. The, <laughs> I didn't even know it was out. I'm like, what? What? And it was a cassette tape thing, which tells you how <laughs> old it really was. <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, no, it was a CD set. So uh, anyway, I did turn it back in. I haven't seen any other bills, but I may be giving uh, giving, uh, Brandon a call here in just a few. Can you still practice law? I can, yeah. I'm actually licensed in Georgia. Why do they call it practicing law? Shouldn't you know it by now? It's a a lifetime of practice to (laughs) get it right. It's like practicing medicine. I mean, you know, good work, good not. Oh, awesome. by the way, the uh, the intro today from Aha, uh-huh, that, that song hit number uh-huh. one 31 years ago today. 31 years ago. That Thanks for rubbing so that in, uh-huh. uh, because I remember playing that back in the day, the top 40 day, and mm-hmm. it used to be a major hit there. So yes, 31 years, 31 what happened years. to time? I know. What happened to our hair? Well, mine went away. Yours is still there, so... It's still there for now. Mm-hmm. Uh, these guys, pretty amazing guys, David Pulaski and also uh, Brandon. And Dan's going to have to pronounce the last name because I'm a senior. Uh, Hans Solik. Thank you. Got very it much. again. Yeah. I'll have it before the end of the show mm-hmm. from Renew Outreach. Uh, and those guys doing amazing things, as Dan mentioned. How'd you guys get, and this has been going on since what, 98, I think I read, right? You started this in 98? That's right. What gave you the idea? What was your, what, and let's do this. What did you do before? A renew outreach. Well, I wasn't at UGA. I went to Georgia Tech. Oh, okay. okay. Right. I'm sorry. That's all the time we have for <laughs> David <laughs> today. So, wow. And he's your COO. I'm that's sure. Correct. Wow. I'll bet you have separate offices. Uh, do we you do. You just email each they other. They keep us apart. Yeah. Yeah. He has this little squishy dog in his office, <laughs> and, and I do mean things to it. We, yeah. You had a degree in engineering, uh, probably, right? That's correct. Yeah. How did I know that? Awesome. So what did you do before Renew? Was What was your vocation? My vocation before Renew was a mobile chemistry lab. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that sounds really cool. That sounds fun. <laughs> I was looking for underground contamination. Oh, scary. well, that doesn't sound too much fun. But That's the kind of stuff I need so I can sue people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what a, a team. match. I love this. We're creating something here. Yeah. Wow, this is organic. Hmm. So wow. you did that. Um, and how long did you do that? About seven years. Seven years, and you were just how did you how did you start this whole thing with renew? Did you start going on missions trips and somebody come to your church and you you were like, wait a minute, somebody needs to do something about getting the message of Christ digitally, right? That's right. Well, in ninety eight, right. what were we doing digitally? Do you remember? Yeah, we were still on cassette tapes, back then. <laughs> <laughs> which is when you check that out from the uh, library. Thanks for that, David. <laughs> Appreciate that. Tracks. Now, what were we doing then? We were. Um, Gosh, we weren't on the internet in 98, were we? Just barely. Probably just barely the beginning. We we didn't have smartphones. We weren't texting. So now, wow, the revolution of technology and taking the message of Christ all around the globe, and it continues Mm -hmm. to grow, right? It does. So how'd you get the idea? Well, I I felt the the desire to go find a remote people group in the Amazon actually was in Peru. Mm. And so a couple of buddies of mine and I went up the Amazon River looking for this remote people group we found it, and then we had a dilemma. The dilemma was, how do you communicate with a group of people that's so different than yourselves, and yeah. how do you specifically bring them the gospel? Right. So uh, I partnered up with a group from Wycliffe, Wycliffe mm-hmm. Bible Translators, right, right. and they said, hey, have right. you heard of the Jesus film? Mm-hmm. So we did a Jesus film in their language, and we brought the Jesus film out to this tribe. We showed it to them, and they came up to us afterward, and they said, we've been waiting our whole lives to hear this story. What took you so long? Mm. Wow. And and then came... Did they say it like that? They said it just like that. No kidding. Yeah, like we've been waiting our whole lives. What Hmm. took you so long? I mean, how can you respond to that? It's like, uh... Uh, uh, Really? That's interesting. That's right. And so then the engineering background that I had and the missions heart that was growing inside me kind of collided, and I started making solar-powered projector systems, solar-powered DVD players, devices that the indigenous could take up and down their rivers. Now, what year was this? This was uh, just coming in maybe 2004. Okay. The so solar technology was kind of yeah, new, was, fresh, yeah, like The DVD iffy. players just got on the market back yeah. then. We used them to keep our kids quiet in the backseat. <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember those days? Yeah, it was a come good on. day. That was yes. an awesome invention. I love that, yes. 
<laughs> so you started that. I want to I want to go back just uh, just a little bit. So you and two of your buddies go up the Amazon. First of all, how cool was that? Yeah, really. Right. But you had a mission, right? We did. Who gave you the idea for that? I mean, you didn't just wake up one morning and go, hey, let's go to the Amazon. I need to call two buddies and go to the Amazon. Did somebody say there's a need there or did you read about it? Or, or? Well, it's, it's one of those things where you kind of know your whole life. I mean, I was saved at a Billy Graham crusade when I was seven years old. And wow. I always knew that I was called to unreached people, Yeah, but felt to go into engineering. And I thought, well, how, how can you do that? You're supposed to be a pastor, a missionary. Yeah, you're yeah. Going to missions. Sure. Georgia Tech, I went there and, yeah. and still wondered, how was I going to ever do missions with that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you uh, then you get these two guys and you go up the Amazon. Man, that's a book right there. You mm-hmm. didn't write a book, did you? Read a book? Have you written a book we're about thinking this? Thinking about writing a book. I we almost should. died in the process because we didn't know what we were doing. You did no not. River, river. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, we got, well, we got up there with this tribe. It took us um, two days to get up this river. We picked the wrong time of year because we didn't know that the Amazon River drops twenty feet. Oh wow! At this particular time, so we ended up having to drag our boat. Um, up and down these rivers, there were alligators and yeah. wild animals all over the place. Now, did you have experience with any type of, uh, what would you call that, navigation. journeying, <laughs> navigation before? Well, I any grew of these up in guys? northern Minnesota. Okay, so the, a little bit. Yeah, the, the land of lakes, Lots right? Lots of lakes, but they yeah. don't Lots drop lakes. 20 feet. No, in, alli- no they, any they alligators in Minnesota? No. Probably not. No. Only gators in Florida, right? right. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. much, yeah. So we got up there, and we finally found our tribe and made connection with them. And then we had to find our way back. We realized we forgot to bring mosquito nets and we oh didn't have enough food <laughs> oh, and we didn't no. have a way to have clean water. We just didn't really know what we were doing. You were young and you were young it's and true. you were kids yeah. and you had a passion. That's <laughs> yes. exactly wow. that's what happened. Exactly. Gosh. So who told you that the tribe was there and how did you find them? Was this there was a I mean, uh, unreached map. I mean, there's a map that says unreached tribe here mm-hmm. with the X on it. I mean, how'd you find out? Well, there was an um, indigenous guy in the city called Iquitos, Peru. It's uh-huh. kind of in the heart of the Amazon. In the, in the Amazon basin there. And he said that he had met with this remote people group and the people in town didn't believe that they even existed, but he showed me some pictures. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the pictures and I went, this, this, is, this is the real deal. These people must exist. So let's go find them. So the people in Peru didn't even believe. No, is that what you're saying? That's, they that's did, correct. That there they were they pastors didn't? in town. They said, oh, this guy's got to be lying. Those people aren't up those rivers. Wow. So no. you didn't even know if you'd be able to communicate with them because who knows if you actually speak their language, if they speak the same language. Or if it would that's be right. dangerous. Right. Uh, they probably don't right. see a lot of visitors. That's right. right. Uh, we were their first white visitors. No way. Oh, that's right. Wow. Yeah. And the second time we went a little further to the larger village, I brought my wife with us. And we actually had to send people up the river ahead of time to warn them that these very ugly people were coming because <laughs> they'd never seen anybody. You mean the people behind you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> and when we got there, they ran screaming into the jungles. <laughs> they did not. A few of them came up to us and greeted us. But this is what they said. This is what dead people look like. Is that wow. what they said? White, white is what, wow. yeah, that's what they said. They thought you were zombies. Wow. It was a exactly. zombie apocalypse yeah, coming. We were the first zombies. <laughs> so wow. we're talking to the guys with Renew Outreach, and we're talking about uh, just kind of the first steps here uh, with David as he went up the Amazon. We want to get into the meat of uh, the story as they go globally, mm-hmm. uh, spreading the message of Christ in, in, in so many ways. So you show up at a tribe. Well, we'll, we'll cover this after this break, but I'm, I'm thinking, you know, you show up at a tribe, What's the first thing you say? They said, how, what took you so long? But, I mean, how do you break the ice on because you're dead-looking to them because yeah. you're you're pale? Boo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, that's... <laughs> Sorry. I, don't ever take start Dan with a joke. on a mission <laughs> trip. <laughs> Way to go. We'll be back with the guys from uh, from Renew. Stay with us. I'm Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. This is Faith Talk Live. From our seventh-floor studio in Buckhead, this is Faith Talk Live with Rick Probst and Dan Ratcliffe, right here on Faith Talk Atlanta. Once upon a time you are listening to Faith Talk Live. I am Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. Happy Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Uh, Robert uh, Zimmerman, Zimmy, uh, they still have, they've tried to contact they found him. found him yet, have they? No, they say they've talked to his agent or his press person, and he's not really brought up much about it. He's on tour currently, mm-hmm. hadn't talked about it on stage. Although somebody said they found it on a website somewhere in a little small print that said that he he won the, the, uh, uh, the Nobel, Nobel Prize, Prize literature in prize, literature. Yeah. and that's so, Bob Dylan, by the way. Good for Zimmy. Yeah. All right, yeah. my Zimmy always sounds like Ronald Reagan. So and Dan <laughs> likes the Reagan better, but I 
I kind of uh, go toward the uh, the Robert Zimmerman or Bob Dylan, David uh, Pulaski, and Brandon Hansalik. Got it. Got it. Way to go. <laughs> hey. Nice work. And, it, and the show's not over. It's usually right. after the show, and I've got it. Renew Outreach, uh, renew outreach uh, equipping the body of Christ with technology, digital media, and strategies to reach the unreached and most remote people with the message of Christ. I love the story. Off mic, and while the break's going on, a Facebook Live, David talking about going into the village there in the Amazon, the very beginning— and they've never seen never white people seen before. pale people looking yeah. dead. And right. the first thing they did, I wanted to know what was the icebreaker. And he said, "What?" They offered us some food, mm-hmm. and it was uh, what it was soup. It was a burrito. <laughs> it was not a burrito. <laughs> what kind of soup? <laughs> it was monkey soup. Yeah. Wow, just like on Indiana Jones. Yeah. And you see, you should have wore your hat next time you come on the show. Wear your Indiana Jones hat. Uh, Bring the whip and everything. This, that's awesome. You have a whip? I don't have a whip. Brandon no. has a whip. He's a lawyer, remember? <laughs> oh, I'm the engineer. I have a hat. There you go. Wow, way to go. Brandon actually is the VP and COO of Renew Outreach, right? How long? You've been there since, what, 2012? Yeah, the uh, middle of 2012. Yeah. Was it the fact that you could go to places and eat monkey soup? Is that what attracted you, or why... Uh, that's why, attractive. Why the passion? That is attractive. Well, really, I mean, very similar to David. Ever since I really gave my heart to the Lord, um, I just felt uh, really called to ministry, and that's been the desire of my heart. I started out, I uh, went through law school because I just, I loved uh, engaging with, you know, my analytical mind and uh, especially mock trial. That's kind of what got me into it. Mm. I, was, I was enthralled with being in the courtroom seeing that process, watching it. And it's, it's kind of like chess with words and people and, and law and arguments. And so that just, I, I love that. And I got into that. You mean and, the, re- the real courtroom, not the Matlock court, courtroom? The real right? courtroom, <laughs> the, real, the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, you know, uh, uh, truth is stranger than fiction. Mm. And so some of the stories that I have from these trials that I had, the real trials are much more engaging and interesting sometimes than the stuff that you see on TV. No um, way. Wow. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, I was going through uh, just these trials. I worked at a district attorney's office as a prosecutor. And the thing was, you know, everybody that I saw needed the Lord, mm-hmm. whether it was the defendant who was the, the person who had committed the crime, allegedly, um, the, uh, the witnesses, the victims, they, they just, they needed the Lord. And the criminal justice system is great. It's important. We've got to have it. But it's not the ultimate answer. Jesus is the ultimate answer. Yeah, right. right. And so the more I saw it, the more I was just drained and drained and drained by trying to to walk through that process and just really wanting to help people. And uh, and so I thought, well, well, what could I do here? I have this lawyer training. I have a background with IT and technology. Mm-hmm. I can't go to the mission field. I mean, that's where my heart was stirred. I love, you know, the first time I, I started hearing about missions and reading some of the stories of the great folks uh, in, in, in history who have done that, I just got stirred for that. But you know, I'm not going to go to Africa, mm-hmm. right? That, that wouldn't be a good use of my skill set. It's interesting that you both had the same thoughts in different right. times, right? The, your skill set just didn't fit with the traditional missionary or those reaching the globe, right? Mm-hmm. Who yeah. knew that technology would be so huge and such an uh, advantageous uh, you tool? Said, you said, here I am, Lord, send somebody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, well here, here was my thought, and this is what a lot of folks think, you know, well, I'll go into business, I'll, I'll be successful, and then I can give. I can give to right. Which is and, common. And, that, and that's, and that's yeah. a huge need. Yeah, sure. That's a, a completely valid way to, to, to walk out your faith. Yeah. Um, and so that was, that was my paradigm, and so that's what I wanted to do. And I was going to go work for a company that um, did software services for law firms uh-huh. so I could mix my, my talents and my skills. Huh. And about the time that I was getting ready to interview for that job, I ran into David. Now, did you and know David before? I did. I did. He's actually, his parents and, and my parents, uh, sorry, he and my parents are really good friends and uh-huh. have been for many, many years. Okay. And, uh, and he pastored a church for a number of years. Um, and that was, that was really a pitiful time for me when I was really coming back to the Lord, because I ran away, I did the prodigal thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Lord brought me back graciously. And so I knew him from that season of my life. And and we were living in the same county, Walton County, where mm-hmm. I was a prosecutor. Mm-hmm. And um, and so we ran into each other, just we hadn't seen each other in quite some time. And I started telling him, hey, this is how I'm feeling about my, my job. And I'd actually meant to go and talk to him because I considered him a mentor and just get his advice on what I was doing in this life change. And then, uh, 
I started talking about it. He said, I didn't realize you had you you knew stuff about technology. I knew you were a lawyer, but mm-hmm. didn't know you had that background. And his eyes just kind of lit up because mm-hmm. he had been praying for for several weeks, I think maybe even a couple of months, for somebody like me to come on and help out at Renew. Wow. And that's that's just the, the, the Lord way God works. I love that. The Lord brought us together. So you pastored yeah. and you lived to tell the story. That's 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 good. Uh, we're talking to the guys from Renew Outreach. We're talking to David and uh, Brandon here. Okay, so you're what are you you're praying about? You're praying for what specifically? You need someone to create or to do or to take the message. How'd you get the idea that you could do this digitally? Was this something that you had what dreamed up? Yeah, we were just watching the trends of technology across the planet and specifically cell phones. At that time, I read the flip phones were, were yeah. pretty popular and right, then right. the smartphones started coming out yeah. about that time. And we've, we've, we watched this growth rate. It was unprecedented mm-hmm. um, in, it, for any technology in any time in history to where in just a matter of years, uh, maybe five to 10 years, there were more cell phones in the world than there were people. Yeah. So it just, it, it was, un- and I thought, what if we could capture the power of the cell phone? What if we could turn the cell phone into a Bible and into a ministry device, into a training device? And that's when I needed someone with more understanding in that area. And so I started praying and then I ran across Brandon and challenged him to come and change the world. And God said, well, here's a lawyer. I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> he's not an engineer, That's but he'll true. work. Well, he, you can use the foolish things of the world to shame <laughs> yeah, the wise. Well, you That's could exactly. always use an extra lawyer, right? I mean, in the whole mix. <laughs> it's, they're right? very helpful to have. Yeah, them. I'm sure Jesus could have used a lawyer. You know, maybe. I don't know. We're talking to the guys to renew uh, outreach. So you get together and you're first, as you were explaining to him, what you needed it for. Now, did he know, uh, he knew you were a pastor. Did he know what you were doing globally at the time? I don't think I so. I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea. Okay, so at that point, before the huge technology boom, what were you doing around the globe with what you had? What were you using? You talked about the film, mm-hmm. right, with mm-hmm. the, the solar DVDs, or was it DVDs? It was DVDs, right. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what we did is is uh, we found that the challenge in front of us now was, since this Jesus film, which is a, a visual gospel presentation it's like a visual bible yeah is uh in fact we have one here for those who can look in and can you see hold it. that wow, uh there. can they see that on yeah. the facebook yeah, it's, live it's, 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 it looks like a backpack or an early bag phone actually <laughs> yeah. doesn't it <laughs> have one just like, like that, that. Mm-hmm. I, brandon we used to have phones in a bag it was called a bag mm-hmm. phone and uh, it would cost what about a thousand dollars a minute or something like that Pretty much so this is the dvd setup right now right the solar well, this is this is actually what we're looking at here is a solar-powered backpack system that was created because going up the river with two or three hundred pounds of equipment to show a Jesus film would sink us. Yeah, so yeah. We, we came up with a new idea. What if we could put it in a backpack? What if we could make it solar-powered? We could add some batteries. So you to can't. It. You guys came up with it. Yeah. So that's so we just started making, just improving it year after year after year, and then pretty soon. The Billy Graham folks with their, uh, I think it was their My Hope program, mm-hmm. got excited ab- about it. And so they started using it. And then the, the Campus Crusade Jesus film crew folks jumped on board and started using it. And, and I had to stop doing everything else. I just started creating, like, harnessing emerging technology. Now, what is that? Adjust. What's that he's whipping out there? The, the solar panel? Yeah, I, yeah it's okay. a flexible solar, solar panel. panel. almost looks like a blanket. So yeah. you just hang that up, and That's then it right. attracts the rays of the sun. It does. Okay. It converts it this to is power. a talk show, Ask you know, yeah. thinking through this. Yeah. So help me here. So mm-hmm. if I don't use the correct uh, terminology vocabulary. That's right. Um, so then what? So you lay that out in the sun uh, for a day, uh-huh. and it charges a battery. Okay. And then that battery will run the projector system, maybe two or three Jesus film presentations. Oh, no wow. kidding. What else is in there, Brandon? Yeah, it's got the uh, amplifier and the speaker system. And it's actually this this particular one. We have several different versions of it, but this one in particular has a microphone, has a amplifier, so you can do worship music and preach in addition. So it's like a whole presentation system. Really, and cool. it actually we don't have it here with us, but it also comes with a screen, um, a ninety two inch screen. So wow. really big screen. You can you can project the Jesus film. And do about a thousand people. You can you can show it to a thousand with this one. We have bigger systems that'll do up to five thousand people. Let's uh, talk more about that. I'd like to see the other side mm-hmm. of that backpack in a second. We'll talk about what's gone uh, digital and how you guys. Maybe some stories too of how the message of Christ has hit the planet with mm-hmm. what you're using. We'll be back with David and Brandon from Renew Outreach. I'm Rick Probst, and I'm Dan Ratcliffe. This is Faith Talk Live. Stay right there.
This is Faith Talk Live with Rick and Dan on Faith Talk Atlanta. You are listening to Faith Talk Live. I'm Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. Hey, hey, wait, we're back on Facebook, by the way. Our camera died, so I had to plug it in. So Did we're it? back on. You obviously need uh, someone who's a I graduate a from Georgia power. Tech yes. Yes, and exactly. a lawyer to talk you through it. I know. And, That's why uh, they're here. And also an IT guy. Support awesome. staff. Got to yes. have good support There you staff. go. It's good to have David and Brandon here for Renew, Outre- Renew Outreach. And while, while the break was going on, I don't know if they caught that or not we kind of yes, opened up the backpack died, there so, yeah. okay they, they cut all that and yeah. then we've got uh, which i want to talk about a little bit that uh that what did you call that the remote bible is that what you called it uh it's Brandon? an audio it's an audio bible player but we call this one the torch because yeah. it's got a it's built in with a flashlight yeah let's talk we'll talk about that uh in a second i find it fascinating there's so many questions I'm getting as they're talking. As I, I think, you know, this could be an all-day show. And it's a, a great cause, these guys. A renew Outreach, equipping the body of Christ with technology, digital media, and strategies to reach the unreached and the most remote people with the message of Christ. Isn't that what it's all about? Amazing. It's amazing, too, the story. You take a guy that's a pastor and a GT, GT, GT grad, GT grad yeah. right? And a lawyer IT guy, and you connect them together, and they get a whole staff together because it's more than you two guys. There's a whole crew of you, right? Yeah. Where'd well, you get the rest of these uh, these folks? God brings them. God really. brings them. We had one guy, our, our lead software developer right now. This is a cool story. Um, he just called us out of the blue. I had actually been praying because we were working on this device to distribute media onto <laughs> cell phones in remote areas, this yeah. little kind of pocket router kind of thing called the light stream. And I was banging my head against the wall because I'm not a programmer. Yeah. And I I was finding some folks to work with, but we, really we needed an in-house full-time programmer to start mm. working with us. And so I'm praying, I'm praying, asking, Lord, where are we going to get this guy? And um, and then all the all of a sudden out of the blue, this guy, Chris, just calls us. He calls our ministry, calls the phone. And uh, and then the the lady there at the time, Vicky, I wonder if she's listening. She uh, she said, "Oh, uh, we don't need anybody right now. Um, <laughs> sorry, bye." And basically just said, <laughs> "Oops." <laughs> so then she, fortunately, I heard about it later. She told me or something. That's why she doesn't work there anymore. <laughs> is that where is that where you're going with this? No, that's she's a wonderful, a wonderful understand. lady, and she she's a, she's one of our prayer powerhouses. Oh, that's awesome, and that's a huge need. You got to have prayer, because, right? Yeah, yeah. Because David goes to places and forgets to take the mosquito netting. <laughs> that's is right. what he does. Do. Otherwise, we'd lose him. So, yes. Vicky, keep praying. And everyone else who prays for us. So, awesome. So anyway, um, it turned out he had seen somebody post something on Facebook like over a year ago, huh. uh, a year prior to the, the time he called, yeah. talking about cell phones and audio Bibles. And he said, wow, I'd love to use my skills to work on that. So he was just calling interested. It turned out he was the perfect guy. He was the he guy. experience with, with mobile app development yeah. and it, exactly the kind of stuff. And just this heart for God because... That's what we want there. We want people who are sold out yeah. for Jesus. They want to live their lives radically abandoned to him, give everything to him. And uh, and so that's just one story. God brings the people. That's how we get the people. That is so cool. And I do want to get into the current technology. And you are using this called the Torch, and you guys created this. Uh, is, is this like phase three? Did you have one that you started off with? And and then you say, okay, well, it could use a, a flashlight, and then you put a flashlight on it, and then it keeps progressing, right? Yeah. I, to just kind of explain, the, just in layman's terms, how that actually works. I love the backside, which yeah. I, which is the The panel. backside is the, the backside. solar panel. Yeah. So, uh, so that you just lay it out in sun, and then it's going to automatically charge the battery. Um, then on the front side, it's got this speaker, uh-huh. and underneath the speaker are some navigation buttons to power on the audio player and and go back and forward between chapters of the audio Bible or whatever the content is. And David said, because my question was, did you have someone there to kind of walk them through it? I mean, listen, I'm 56. I still have problems with technology. My 13-year-old kind of helps me navigate through it. But you said they were pretty sharp on the DVDs. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a little training, and they know how to pass that around, how to, you know, charge it up and that kind of thing. What's been the effect since that has been released? And how long has that been? Remind me. Well, actually, this one hasn't actually been gone into production yet. This is a prototype. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, we're just about to release this, should be out by the end of the year. Okay. And people are clamoring for them because we had a previous generation device Uh, we called the Papyrus that did not have a flashlight in it. 
And we actually ran out of those not too long ago. So the papyrus so. was just that without the light, and it had, uh, did it have all Stanley, Dr. Stanley stuff and, and the Bible? What else did it have on there? No, that one didn't have Dr. Stanley stuff okay. on it. Just uh, that was primarily the Bible. Sometimes we'd put a little of uh, the indigenous worship music if mm-hmm. we had that. Sometimes we'd use two languages of the audio Bible. As a matter of fact, there's one ministry that uses these actually to teach English. Mm. So they'll put English oh, and then cool the local language. Wow. And then they use the Bible. A lot of ministries do this internationally, use the Bible to teach English. And okay. So people learn about the Word of God as well as learning English. This is fascinating, isn't mm-hmm. it, Dan? It really is. I love the indigenous worship. Now, who who records that? Do they record it there? Is it somebody here in the States that that uh, can do it? How do you? What's the deal there? There's a group out called um, Operation Mobilization OM, and they have a ministry called Heart Sounds. Uh-huh. And so their job is to go be with the indigenous, listen to them, see what is their expression back to God. So someone comes to God, they're out in the middle of the jungle. What does that look like when they communicate back to him? Yeah, they yeah. capture that. Usually right. there's some sort of at least rhythm or music to it. Hmm. So they'll capture that, bring it back to Atlanta. They're actually out of Atlanta, record it, and then they'll give it to us, and then we're able to send wow. it back on these devices cool so that, that they have their own heart response back to God. Um, and then that can be shared among the rest of the And industry. no offense, high-quality music and instruments in a studio. So, I mean, it's like what we would listen to on the radio or... But I love I love how you guys cover. It's not just showing them the uh, the gospel presentation with the the Bible story on the video. You, yeah. They have that and have the chance to come to the Lord. But then they can also have the opportunity to learn and be discipled through listening to the Bible, listening to teaching. That's awesome. I love That's that. right. In fact, we found something interesting about that. That if you go and do a, you bring Billy Graham to the jungle and have him preach, and you have a bunch of people raise their hands and come forward. Billy Graham leaves or the Jesus film leaves. Right. Mm-hmm. And you have these these seekers who are still there. If right. you come back a year later, only 2% of them are still seeking because there was nowhere for them to go. Mm-hmm. Right. Where they right. just kind of stepped into a relationship with Jesus but mm-hmm. didn't know how to proceed right. with that. And so there was a test on um, just a few years ago with um, Faith Comes by Hearing and, and Crew. And they went to India mm-hmm. and they showed a Jesus film. And the people came forward. I think they actually had 6,000 participants in this. So 6,000 people responded, were seekers, raised wow. their hands, said, okay, I'm in. I <laughs> want to follow this Jesus. That's unbelievable. Now, remember, if they leave and come back, they'll only be 2%. Right. Mm-hmm. But they did one different thing. They took one of these audio solar Bibles, and they found among the seekers a man of peace, a, a person that the, that the indigenous trust. Mm-hmm. And they said, here, you hold this, you keep it charged, and you host a Bible listening group in your house. He, the guy's not going to preach. He doesn't know what that means anyway. Right. So he just hosts it. It's interesting. They listen to a portion of the Word of God. They discuss it. They they argue about it. They think about it. And that was the only difference in this test. Mm-hmm. It was just adding one of these. So the results after six months was the 6,000 listeners, instead of dropping down to a couple hundred, jumped to 16,000. Whoa! The group's wow. more than doubled in size. So 2% to really 200% difference in, in adding audio scriptures to a follow-up process uh, for indigenous people in a remote place around the world. And that's when we decided <clears throat> we had to make something to facilitate that. How exciting. David wow. and Brandon from Renew Outreach, I know you don't go on feelings, but how does this make you feel? You got to be like adrenaline's pumping through mm-hmm. you all the time, right? You with this, I think God is calling me to do this. Look at it now. Yeah. Can't wait to find out where it's going. Right. Who knows? It's exhilarating. Well, let's it, talk it about this. Gosh, there's so many questions I want to ask. We got two minutes. So do you have a quick story with the torch? Well, with the papyrus first. Do you have a quick story, maybe a group, a village that heard the message for the first time and how they've grown or reacted or that kind of thing? Just real quick. Yeah, and then I want to sure. get into the, the the current technology of the phone, the smartphone, mm-hmm. et cetera, and how we're going with that. Go ahead, Dave. Well, since we're already talking about my <clears throat> my tribe in the Amazon, we, uh, we, we showed the Jesus film, and these are we, we went to all the villages in the area. We had someone go up and show the film, invited them down to a camp we have in the Amazon, uh, those who would want to come and, and get their own audio player. So they came down there, and we gave them one of these audio Bibles, mm-hmm. and they took it back to their village. And a year later, we were able to make contact with them again to see what happened. And there was a young man, married man named Segundo, 
came down, back down the river with his with his family, and my wife speaks fluent Spanish. I stole her from the mission field. <laughs> <laughs> it only took her four years to figure out how awesome I was. But I finally got her. You know. She thinks I'm awesome now. Yeah, that's good. So, so she's interviewing Segundo because he speaks a little bit of broken Spanish now, and asks, so what did you think? You know, what happened? What did you like about this audio Bible? He looked at her like she was crazy, and he said, Jesus. He's like, okay. That's, that's what, else what I like. He said, well, well, what happened? He said, well, I got back to my village and I took this player and I hosted this meeting and about two thirds of my village would come every night and listen wow. to the scriptures together. And she said, well, what, what happened with that? And he said, well, we learned something new. We learned about love. Never, never knew about love before. Oh, and wow. We learned about forgiveness in there. And he said, I quit, I quit drinking. We were drunk all the time because that's with this particular tribal group, it's how they get close to God. They get really drunk and they see demons. And then mm. and he was next in line to be shaman for the area. And he said, I just, I'm not going to, he said, I decided not to get drunk anymore. And, and I've decided not to become a shaman wow. next generation. Wow. And they said, well, is there anything you're disappointed about? He said, yeah, I'm disappointed that the rest, that that one, that one fourth or one third yeah. of the community aren't part of, of what we're a part of right now. Mm. So what we saw, this is like in a, this isn't an, they don't have never seen an outsider. There's no influence, no missionary. It's not mm -hmm. that they wish there was an Apostle Paul who was there every day mm -hmm. with them, but just the power of the word of God yeah. all by itself in a remote location in the middle of the jungle, cut loose in, in heart language in a way they can understand it, non readers. And this was never possible even just a few years ago, and suddenly transformation happens. Amen. Wow, what wow. a story. I know there are thousands of uh, stories. Uh, maybe we'll get to another story in the next segment. We definitely want to talk about how uh, technology with apps, mm -hmm. how that's working with uh, Renew Outreach. David and Brandon will be back with us. I'm Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. This is Faith Talk Live. Stay tuned. You're listening to Faith Talk Live with Rick Probst and Dan Ratcliffe, right here on Faith Talk Atlanta. You are listening to Faith Talk Live. I am Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. Happy Wednesday to you. It is a great uh, Wednesday. We've got uh, David Pulaski and uh, Brandon Hansalik of uh, Renew Outreach. They're here equipping the body of Christ with technology, digital media, and strategies to reach the unreached and most remote people with the message of Christ. Some mm -hmm. great stories. we got to have these guys back. And uh, we'll get people, uh, we'll get the website out here in just a second so folks can find out more about them and see what they're doing, what they're doing now and what's going to happen. Uh, before we get back to them, uh, let's see what's going on. We've got an interview this afternoon with Brian Chappell. Is that this afternoon? This is afternoon, yes. Grace Unlimited. We're mm -hmm. going to play that back. You can hear Brian Chappell uh, Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. on 590. And then Chuck Swindoll has Searching the Scriptures, his latest project, his book. You can get a free chapter at Faith Talk Atlanta. Dot com. Tomorrow, Michael Holderfield of uh, Mill Creek High School. He's the director there. They provide chaplain services on high school campuses. Stacy Gross is a friend of his. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the connection. She's going to be here as well. Should we let her in? Uh, I don't know. We might want to pray about that. I'm not sure. Praying and fasting mm -hmm. will happen like we are with the uh, Panthers, and we'll see if we'll let her in tomorrow. Wow. She, of course, from Favorite Place Travel. But we're going to talk to Michael tomorrow. By the way, real quick, yeah. just got to say uh, thanks to the folks at Serve International. They're the ones, first of all, that told us about uh, you guys at, uh, oh, at, Jim, at Vineyard? Venue Outreach. Yeah, Jim, Jim Vineyard. And they keep typing on here that they are watching the show on Facebook. And so thank you guys at uh, at Serve International for watching and for yeah, all your support. You we love you guys. That Jim Vineyard is, is everywhere. We're is. Facebook friends and mm -hmm. he has like 20,000 million friends. Yes, he does. Yeah, He knows more, everybody. More than you and I together. Yes. It's good to have these guys uh, with Renew Outreach. Okay, so let's pick up. Uh, first of all, give us a website that folks can go to. Is renewoutreach.org or .com, is it? Renewoutreach.com. Yep. .com. That's the place to go to to find out more what your mission is, what's going on, and how folks can get involved financially. You said before the break, I think you said, or maybe while the break was going on, that you could always use more people right. to help. In what capacity? Yeah, well, we need folks uh, to volunteer to help build the, build the systems, do yeah. production work. Uh, we need help. We're, we're a bunch of tech geeks, and so we love to build new things, experiment with new things, and make the technology happen. But it's the other people with other skill sets, like you know, marketing mm -hmm. and writing, telling some of the stories. You know, we get thousands, hundreds, thousands of stories in of just amazing things that God's doing, and we want to try and tell these and, and send these out. But we don't have folks on staff yeah. who can good writers. Who can, 
yeah, yeah write those and do the journalistic diligence and so uh just different types of supports support people so they could call you up call you up and hopefully the right person answers and says yes we need you is <laughs> yeah. that what you're saying exactly yeah exactly awesome well let's pick up now with we're talking about uh you know who doesn't have a smartphone right mm-hmm. so how is the smartphone technology and apps how are you using that to uh to spread the message yeah, well, there's uh, there's kind of two areas you can go when you start talking about using mobile devices for ministry. This is a term coined called mobile ministry, and there's a group out there called the Mobile Ministry Forum mm-hmm. that uh, hosts events and talks about and has a good resource resources on how to do that. But there's two two worlds. You've got the online and you've got the offline because there's this remarkable thing that's happened where in the US in Europe in you know in in the very wealthy parts of the developing world everybody's got smartphones mm-hmm. and those smartphones are all connected to the internet right mm-hmm. we've got our 3G our 4G 4G LTE we have all that here well you get into the develop, undeveloped or developing world and it's just not there mm-hmm. i mean uh, you know i was in indonesia in february and trying to send an email sometimes can be like an act of Congress well. because it's, it's just, it's so hard to find good connectivity. And so if it's that hard to just send an email or do web browsing, then you're surely not going to be able to download an audio Bible, download, mm-hmm. you know, a whole bunch of content, an app. And so uh, there's a lot of great ministries out there that are doing online type, type focus, but then you, you end up leaving out a lot of these people who are the poor, the lost, the last, and the least. Mm who aren't getting online and can't access those resources. So that's where we kind of pi- started pioneering is in this offline world. And so we do things like we take these little micro SD cards, which mm-hmm. are these tiny chips that almost every phone in the world can can use. And by the way, 86% of the world has smart has a phone. 86%. 86%. There are more wow. phones in the world than there are toilets. Oh, gosh. And so you've got these people in these hovels living, they've got nothing Except but they they'll have a phone. Have a smartphone. They'll have a phone. It's one of the yeah. first things they or get because it's their ticket out of out of poverty. Yeah. Really Isn't that interesting. You have you have a whole wave of banking. I can't get into all of it now, mm. but at any rate, these devices can use this gospel type media, um, but you got to get it to them. And without the without the internet, how are you going to do that? Mm. So we use micro SD cards. We distribute the the same content, the Jesus film, the audio Bible, Doctor Stanley's messages, what whatever it is, the worship music. And we put it in these cards and we distribute thousands of them around the globe. Then we started pioneering and making uh, this device we, we, we call the Lightstream, which is sort of a little, it's like a, it's almost like an internet in, the, in a box. Hmm. So you put this thing in a remote village, there's no internet, but it creates a Wi-Fi hotspot. Hmm. And when anyone who has a phone connects to that Wi-Fi hotspot, bam, they have the only thing playing on the internet today is the Jesus film? Is wow. the audio Bible? Mm-hmm. Is is this content? Um, so those are the kind of things that we do to to try and get this content onto onto phones. Very and cool. This technology is currently being used, and as technology grows, what do you see coming up? I mean, you guys are techie guys, so you see the future, right? What's uh, how can we make this fat more fast and more furious? There are yeah. ways, right? Yeah, yeah, there are. Um, you know, one of the the internet is obviously expanding. There's a lot of folks working on this. You've got the face. Facebook, who's doing, uh, you know, doing these planes that are supposed to give internet coverage, and you've got um, Elon Musk, who's putting satellite networks. Mm-hmm. But that's been happening for quite some time, and it's still been very slow. And then you have the issue of government actors, you know, or state actors who are going to limit. You've got the Great Firewall of China. Yeah. You know, the internet's not free everywhere, um, and so really, I think the key is is more innovation in this sort of offline space. One of the things we're working on now is an app that can actually be shared from phone to phone. Wow. So you get this Bible app on your phone. You don't have to go out to the internet and go to the Google store or to the Apple store. You, you just got this thing on your phone from a micro SD card or from the light stream. And then you go up to your friend and you say, this, this has been changing my life, what I've been reading. Let me share it with you. Mm-hmm. And they just hit a little button on their phone and it shares phone to phone. It doesn't go to the internet. It wow. just goes straight phone to phone. So innovating in, in ways like that, I think, is what will help to, to create a grassroots viral spread of Bibles in the heart language of a people that can never be stopped. Hmm. Can't be tracked, can't be stopped by the internet, by the government or by anybody else. And so 
that's the stuff that I get really excited about. That yeah. is exciting. That is. Uh, wow. Who knew? And and who comes up with these ideas? These this guys, is amazing, right here. <laughs> well, not just us. We just had a really cool, uh, innovative uh, conference at um, at In Touch Ministries, just yeah. right down the road here. Um, they hosted us, and we we brought in a whole bunch of the different ministries that we've gotten partnered with. And we sat in a room for two days, and we said, "Hey, what are you doing? Uh-huh. How can we help? How can we partner together?" So wow. there's a real movement in the body of Christ and ministries. To come together to, to work collaborate, together. don't you and love innovate. that? Innovate, and so yeah, it's just amazing. Uh, it, it really is. Hmm. Wow. wow, I know we're uh, running out of time on the show. God's just moving uh, with this uh, in like the Middle East and underground churches, which is kind of scary, kind of exciting. And wow, what's next, real quick for you? What's next, David? <laughs> wow. I can it, tell it, a story. It, it I can tell a really cool story. Middle East it's on the radio. It is. We're talking about <laughs> Middle East. It's like. Yeah, there's a really cool story that we just got in. How much time do we have? One minute. One, one minute. minute. Okay, yeah. I'll tell this story in one minute. So uh, there's a partner ministry working in the Middle East, and we got a request from them for micro SD cards in these audio Bibles. Yeah. And so they started distributing them to Muslim soldiers and refugees. And this is what happened. They got they heard over and over again the story that the man in the film, Jesus in the mm-hmm. Jesus film was the same man who visited them in their vi- in visions in their tents and in their dreams. Wow. Wow, I get cold chills hearing that. I yeah. love that. That's amazing. Yeah. So God's moving and we've got to get the word to people yes. so they know who he is. Wow. We got to have you guys back. There are more stories. We want to talk about uh, underground churches and mm-hmm. cool stuff and going and forgetting your mosquito nets and all that kind of Dealing stuff. Dealing with gators and everything. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Good to have you guys. Renew Outreach again. The uh, website is renewoutreach.com. Wow. Tomorrow it's going to be a great show. Uh, Join us for the Thursday edition. I'm Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. This is Faith Talk Live. Have an amazing Wednesday.